online. Hello, Miss Jaslyn. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm uh, fine. Thank you. So let me check with the people in the room. I'm not yet in the room. Hello, how is everybody? Hello, everyone. Hi, how are you, Dr. Tifa? Alhamdulillah, finally we can uh, start our teaching collaboration, Miss Yaslin. Yes, uh, on short notice, but inshallah it will happen today and tomorrow, yeah? Yeah, and yeah. today we have uh, Miss Oval. And yeah. the classes will be mandatory for um, digital marketing in UETM. So yes. I think a lot of you already here, your yeah. students. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. We can start in a minute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are waiting for Miss Oval. Miss Oval now is in the preparation to start the class. Okay, sure. Let me check. Are you in the campus or are you still working from home? I am in the campus and at the moment we are having a parallel meeting. So I will uh, follow the classes while uh, in the meeting room, Miss Jesslyn. Okay, sure, sure. And for the attendance, we'll, the link will be held by the lecturer. So Ms. Ofa will be directly uh, share the meeting, uh, the attendance link to the classes whenever she wants. And also Ms. Jaslyn, uh, tomorrow, if you want to share the attendance link, please, please share whenever you want to share to the class. Okay, sure. Okay, there is also Miss Nani. Miss Nani is a vice head of the management department in Purbanas Institute. Hello, Miss Nani. Okay, we are having Miss Ophalia here. Hello, Miss Ophalia. Hello, Miss Tifa. Hello, everyone. Hope all is well yeah, today. Finally, to yeah, meet you. Miss, yeah, Miss <laughs> Jasmine here. Finally, okay. I couldn't see you because your camera off so then. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm using the phone at the moment. I will get on my oh. laptop uh, later on. All right, then. Take your right, time. Sure. <laughs> uh, Miss okay. Ova, you can start the lecture anytime when you're ready. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. Uh, I'll be waiting for Miss Tifa. Uh, first okay uh -huh. sure. thank you everyone for coming and especially for miss jason that allow us to come to your classes even though this is online hopefully in the near time we can go to uitm for uh, offline classes and mm -hmm. for the first session we are having miss opal miss opal is a lecturer in content marketing which is it's tomorrow and we are having collaborative teaching so today miss opal, miss opal will be the lecturer for uh, digital marketing and tomorrow we will have a second session Miss Jaslyn will be the lecturer for content marketing the topic is international best practice and Miss Oval is the best because it's also the uh, marketing in Purbanas Institute so practically she already competent with this topic already okay everyone Miss Oval, I had offered the microphone to you. You may start the class, and uh, the attendance list will be shared by Miss Oval anytime you want. And I will also follow the class while having our meeting. All okay, right. Miss Oval, the time is yours. 
Okay, thank you, Ms. Nifa, for giving me the chance for, uh, what is it, uh, giving a kind of a shared session. This is a shared session, yeah, Ms. Jocelyn, okay? Well, okay, um, well, okay everyone, uh, allow me to uh, share my presentation. Okay. Uh, it's possible to have uh, Mentimeters with you as well. Would you like to open your Mentimeters? Because we are going to have kind of an engagement as well. Well, okay then. Um, okay, the introduction has been uh, conveyed by Ms. Tifa, so I'm going to present my presentations and I will uh, share my uh, yeah, our client. Okay, can you, uh, what is it? Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, I can. All right, thank you. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. This is an this is an honor for me. Okay. Uh, okay. This is the topic: international best of practice in content marketing. So I'm trying to bring uh, Starbucks case. Okay. Uh, to the content marketing uh, this morning. Well, okay, everyone. Uh, these are the agenda for my class. The first one is introduction and then the role of customers and organization and then what is content marketing. I do believe that you know about the content marketing because since this is how many meetings that you have already had in your class, okay? And then we've got also the three main components in managing global content and the last one, we are going to talk about the Starbucks. Okay, uh, if it is possible, class, okay? You can go to demanti.com and use the code uh, 4450913193. Okay, everyone, have you already opened the mantimeter.com? Yes? Yes, miss. Yes, please. Okay, and then please fill in the passcode, okay, which is stated there. And then try to answer the questions we have. Menti.com. Yes, menti.com. Uh -huh. Okay, the question is, uh, things to ponder when you create a content marketing. Okay, I, I can present this one. Oh, no one has already joined. Sudha, uh, have you joined the mantimeter.com? Yes, please. Yes, but I couldn't see. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to give the, uh, what is it, to share my Mentimeters. Okay. We've got 86 person here. Okay. And then no one has joined my uh, Mentimeters. Things to ponder when you create a content marketing. I do believe that you have already uh, learned about the content marketing and then we are going to see some examples here. Okay, and use the code uh, 4450-09319, please. Yes? Is there any difficulties? Hello, are you with me? Exposure, okay, thank you. One person is already engaged, okay. Because when we're talking about content marketing, so we need to have a kind of engagement with our customers, okay. So this is engagement in my class. The trends of marketing and then we recap, what else? Okay, we've got four person, yes, okay. What is your target audience? Aha, uh -huh. creativity, very good. How can my content be viral? Yes, all right, okay. And then what else? Come on, come on, come on, 
we've got around 80 persons here. Yeah. A value, all right then, yes. Apex, uh-huh, demography, all right. And then what else? Uniqueness, all right then. What to highlight in my company? A value to the viewers, okay. What else? Okay, what will your process be? Uh-huh. How to distribute? Okay, 17. Okay, this is okay, less than the half people here. Okay, if it is possible, let's have a 40 persons or yes, it's getting increased. Okay. Uh content strategy, all right then. What else? What will your process be? And then what's people like the most? Yes, very good. Okay, talking about the flavors, okay, and then uh, the taste, yes, the main goal, the attitude, uh-huh. What else? All right, 23 persons. <clears throat> and one, all right, very good. Anything else to attract? Okay, something interesting, uh-huh. Okay, so we are going to have a kind of a warm-up first, yeah? Okay, <laughs> is it okay, yeah? All right, class, okay, very well done. Uh, promote value to the viewers, creative content strategy, all right then. Okay, okay, it's getting 29. Who is my target audience, okay? Right, okay, 30 people. Okay, 30 persons, sorry. Uh-huh, what else? Target marketing, uh-huh, yes. Anything else, okay? Okay, we've got to uh, determine what will be the concept first, yes. And Chan? Oh, I'm so happy that everyone is getting involved. All right, identify, okay. What else? Yeah, do you wanna say something? Okay, all right, still, we are still waiting for other audience to get involved. Okay, yes, anyone? Consistency, all right then, yes, very good. Biography and then what are your goals, what you want to achieve? Okay, so you've got to determine your objective first and then what will be the target or what you're going to achieve for your, your objective, yeah? Uh-huh, the concept, okay, and then what else? The value is already mentioned. Uh, come on, come on, I'm still waiting. Well, okay, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, the implementation of our uh, planning program, yeah? Okay, thank you everyone who has already involved in my uh, menti.com. Okay, I'm going to stop and we're going to have a discussion, yeah? Okay, so I will be happy if you could, uh, what is it, make your camera on then so that I can see you and, okay. Okay then, uh, 102 persons are involved in my class. Thank you. Uh, based on what we have already have uh, in what is that in our mentimeters.com, you said that uh, things to ponder when you create a content marketing. Uh, Farah, can you uh, remember okay what we have already had in the menti.com? No, 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 don't, don't be okay. Don't worry, okay. When you open your camera and then you are afraid of something okay you will be asked okay no okay i just thought i would like to what is that just try to 
uh, uh, try to uh, make sure that what you have already written down, okay? Uh, my question is things to ponder when you create a uh, content marketing. So from dementimeters.com, I have many, uh, not several, okay, many answers. Uh, among others are value, creativity, and then uh, the concept, and then uh, the process. Anything else that you can mention that you have already written down? A camera, probably. Viral, our uh, content become viral. And then what else? Yes? Creativity. Yes, Amiru. Hello. Consistency per, and then what else? Hello. Okay. When you create a content marketing, you need to remember about your target audience. You have already mentioned there, okay? The target audience and then what is the objective or your of your uh, content, what you are going to communicate, right? The value as well, okay? And then how can you promote the product or services? Or anyone can help me, please? Pak Zuri, probably, or Pak Mulyanto, or Miss. Yes? Anyone? No? Yes? Anyone? Okay, we have already had in our Mentimeters. Okay, I can share. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. See here. Okay. We've got the value to the viewers. Okay, what to highlight in my content. Uniqueness. You've got to be different from others. Okay. And then the environment. This is important things. Okay. Instead of the target audience, the objective, and then also what is that? Uh, how do you uh, use the channels? Okay, and then how to promote? Yeah, okay. Uh, what values can you give to the audience as well about your product or services? Yeah, well, okay, then now I'm going to uh, okay, that's our uh, exercises and then our uh, warming up questions. Okay in regards to the uh, our uh, materials today. Now, let's continue down uh, to the next one. Okay, we have already done for the mentimeters.com. Okay, now if you still remember about uh, with uh, Peter F. Druckers, uh, he mentioned that uh, the purpose of a business is to create the customers why I'm trying to engage, okay, between the content marketing with this statement, okay? Every business, okay, is trying to engage with the customers and behind that, there is an objective, okay? Why the customer driven, uh, we are now uh, in the era, we are trying to look at the what China happens China. in the external uh, markets instead of seeing our, uh, what is that? Uh, if you take a look at the integrated marketing communication, now we are going to take a look at outside, inside, instead of inside, outside. That's why it is important that we need to be able to create a customers, okay? And then it is mentioned that uh, it is hard to find an organization that doesn't talk about being customer driven. Uh, why the customer is very important and uh, has an important role in the company and then also in uh, what is that in increasing our sales as well about the product and services okay it is mentioned here when a company stresses the idea okay when we are talking about the idea on how to promote our product or services okay so it will be related to uh, content marketing it's signally the organization to listen more deeply to the customer what are the customer wants okay 
and then trying to share the information broadly within the company and to deliver solution and almost sell themselves. Okay, uh, some companies have already, uh, what is that, uh, known to be a customer driven such as Amazon, Zappos and Nordstorm. Well, okay, uh, this is why I talk about this one at the very beginning about the role of customers and organization. That's because uh, customers, okay, you know that the customer is the starting point of marketing activities. How can we create a marketing activity strategies without knowing our target audience? That's why we've got to see the uh, interconnection between the customers and organization. And we know that the customers nowadays are very smart and intelligent. Okay, and uh, they can choose, okay, as we know that in marketplace, we've got a lot of or a very, uh, uh, what is that, uh, various or variety product that we want to choose before making a good decision. Okay, so that's why uh, we've got to be able to distinguish our product or services uh, from others. Okay, uh, this thing, okay, uh, in this digital era, okay, uh, the, the, the customers can easily find the uh, what is it? The, the prices, uh, we can find the transparencies, okay? And then uh, everything will be connected timely. And then if they don't, uh, if they uh, don't feel satisfied, they will, uh, what is it? Express their voices into the chat and then it will give some impacts as well. That's why, okay, now companies is trying to engage uh, the latest information on various marketing channels to fix the curiosity of the customers. If you take a look at in some brands, okay, they don't only use one channels. It's not uh, talking about the traditional media anymore because in this digital transformation era, we can use the multi-channel or omni-channels of uh, media that we can use to promote our product. And then, uh, when we are talking about the content marketing, so it is different from advertisement. Why? Since uh, you know that it's a kind of a storytelling, okay, about our product or services. We are not talking about the product itself, but we are trying to talk about what are the value under uh, underlining our product or services that we are trying to offer. And then, uh, in other words, uh, from advertisers, if it wants to tell the world that it is a rock star, but if it wants to show and prove why it is one and have great content so we've got to use it as a marketing strategy okay and then all right then oops sorry I was stuck okay my cursor is okay wait okay and then yeah when we are talking about the content marketing or probably everyone can uh, give me some uh, definition of content marketing it's based on a role that content marketing can be defined as a management process where a firm identify, analyze, and satisfies customer demand to gain a profit with the use of digital content distributed through electronic channels. Or any, uh, okay, anyone have any different idea or do you have any uh, comments about this kind of definitions? Yes, feel free, please. Hello. When we are talking about the content marketing, so you've got to be able to identify your customer first. Why? Yes, Miss Nurul Layu, do you want to say something? Uh, hi. Uh, for Aurelia, for me, content marketing is like a storytelling. Like now we are in another era. So mm -hmm. we use TikTok and digital platform to make a marketing. It's not mm -hmm. same like before. Yes, so that's right. If I really said mm -hmm. I did, it's changed mm -hmm. my era. Yeah, okay. Uh, the content marketing, okay, it is mentioned by Nurul Ayu. Okay, it is mentioned that we, we try to use uh, the digital platform, not like uh, used to be, okay? We just only use the traditional, but now, we, okay, good. What else? Anything else? Yes, anyone? Hello? Um, yes. Content marketing is like a soft selling. 
Yes, it's a like a soft selling. Can you say uh, explain about that, Amiro? Your background is very stunning. Okay, <laughs> I love it. Yes, go on, tell me. It's a soft selling. You don't tell about the what is that? Come on, come on. Give me some. Um, it's refer to an advertisement and sell approach that features subtle language. Okay, can you give me the example? Example of soft selling is. Uh, is it in like Shopee? Shopee, okay. <laughs> Where okay. you abandon? Um, uh huh. It's like when an online shopper has abandoned the shopping cart and with several items, and they send an email that to shopper that they um they left the items in the cart. Okay. Is that well, okay, uh, soft selling is not really telling you what the product is, but you can probably uh, inform the audience with a different way, okay? Uh, yeah, that's a good example, actually, okay? Can you give me another example, class? Anyone? For example, is there anyone who has a business, running a business, and then you are not going to tell us about your product, but actually you are trying to give, uh, what is it, the uniqueness, the competitive advantage or the value of your product, for example. Yes, anyone? Okay, that's good. When we are talking about the content marketing, we are not talking about the hard selling anymore yes okay because there are many forms of content marketing that we have already learned probably in your uh, class miss jocelyn's class and also in my class okay there are a lot of form okay uh what is it talking about the content marketing it can be a jingle it can be a storyline it can be uh the tips and tricks okay about something okay and then uh, it can be a blogging, okay? But the most important thing is you are trying to engage with your prospective customers, okay? Uh, okay, can you tell me how can I uh, engage with prospective, uh, prospective customer if I'm running a business then? Yes? Anyone? Hello, don't be shy, feel free, come on. Uh, by doing a survey. Okay, oh yeah, can you uh, make your camera on so that I can see your beautiful face, miss? Ah, okay, that's great. Bukhari or probably you wanna say something? Um, I would say about, maybe uh, if we take it from the, Unformal way, mm -hmm. a more to casual. Yes. From if you if you do postings, so we can get the uh, response from the comments. So yes. Just like so in social medias, uh, uh, social medias usually. Okay, mm -hmm. and then, uh, we can also do surveys through email. But mm -hmm. this thing is not very usual. But this is uh -huh. one of the method also. Okay, uh -huh. so I would say. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Very well done, Bukhari. Yes. Okay, the engagement can be uh, done through the comments, a liking in Instagram, okay? And then probably, I, I do believe that you like to share the story in Instagram. Am I? <laughs> do you like it, right? Yes? Okay, for example, when you buy a product or some, uh, uh, what is it, when you buy a product and then actually you are not required to share about the product you bought. But you unconsciously share it in your Instagram story. Am I right? <laughs> and then you tag uh, the sellers. Yeah? Okay, so it's a kind of engagement as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Bukhari, is there anyone who wants to give me another example? Hello? Well, Olivia, can I try? 
Yes, please. Okay. So since since I doing business now, for me, we use from review. We ask them how they feel about the product. So that's how we contract with them. Mm -hmm. All right. And we do very a survey good. also. Okay. Very good. Okay. So you are asking about their, uh, what is that? Uh, their opinion about your product. Yes. Yes, Nuru. Yes, all right. Yeah. Then, uh, you, what kind of platform do, do you use for running your business time? Are you using the Instagram business account or TikTok? Okay, nowadays TikTok is getting more popular. Yeah, which one? So do basically, you use? I use TikTok because TikTok uh -huh. is so easy to spread our business awareness but mm -hmm. at instagram I, I use business account and we always mm -hmm. use whole patients every day we ask them all right very good there is also some uh, benefits when you are using the instagram business account right you can see the 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 traffic the views and then also you can see how many persons who what is it give some thumbs likes okay like that and then you can also measure about the, what is it? The traffic. Yeah. All right, then. Thank you, uh, Miss Nurul. Okay. Okay. I'm so glad about, uh, okay. Okay. For today, then. Well, okay, then. Now, uh, we are talking about the global, okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, focusing on adapting the message to the target audience. Since we are talking about the international best practice, so... You've got to be aware, okay, when you make a message or the information or the content that you are trying to make. So you've got to concern who will be your target audience, okay? It is mentioned here, okay, the most multinational companies involved in content marketing and they focus on adapting their message to target the right audience when doing business globally, okay? And then uh, it is important for marketers to alter the contents the way that they are culturally relevant at the same time, ensuring content to be appropriate and accurate to maintain a consistent brand image. Uh, so it means that when I want to sell my product, if I want to expand, okay, uh, what is it, my business to Malaysia, so I need to learn about the cultures, okay? So I, it means that I need to see from the outside what is the trend, what is, uh, what is that, uh, what the customers really wants. And then, uh, so I've got to be able to adapt, okay, the message that I want to convey uh, in my content marketing. So I've got to see based on the target audience, yeah? Okay, and then, Again, uh, we've got to concern as well about the people, the company process, the system when we are talking. Okay, so this is a kind of a part of uh, how are the people manage about uh, the business and then what about the target audience itself? What about the process of the company? And then what about the system? System is including with the cultures, okay, religion, okay. If you do you still remember in uh, 2018, TikTok is not allowed, okay, uh, in Indonesia. It is banned. But nowadays, TikTok is, you know, developed uh, uh, very, uh, you know, very fast. And then even there is a kind of uh, an award from uh, TikTok for certain people, you know, because they can adapt to the regulation uh, imposed in Indonesia, yeah? Okay, and then uh, there are some ways of content marketing that can be implemented in effective marketing strategies such as localization. So it means, again, the target audience. When, uh, who will be your target audience and then the demography, the psychography, you've got to be able to identify as well. And then the personalization, this is important. Because some, uh, nowadays, the, the prospective, cu prospective customers, they want to be, you know, they don't, they want to be like uh, exclusive uh, things, okay? Then uh, they don't want to have a similar thing with 
uh, from uh, with others. Okay, so we've got to be able as well uh, to what is that? Uh, to try to modify our product based on the customers' wants, the emotion. The emotion as well is really uh, important when we want to make the content marketing. Again, emotion will be related to the localization and personalization. You cannot, okay, for example, I don't know about the trend or about the, the habits of the prospective in uh, Malaysia audience, but in Indonesia, okay, uh, they like to tend to have like uh, verbal in making the, uh, what is that, the advertisement, okay? And then uh, the content, like for example, like dancing, okay? Uh, singing, uh, for example, like that. Okay, so you've got to be able as well. And then also the diversification approach. What kind of approach that we are going to adopt? Okay, because, you know, uh, we've got to be able to identify again, talking about the target audience and then who will be the segmentation. Okay, and then uh, we've got to be able as well to make a kind of an innovation and collaboration by having co-creations, okay? And then the trust. Trust is the most important thing when we make or create a content marketing. And then the last one, I, 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 I do still remember in my menti.com, someone has already answered with ethics, okay? So uh, this is important, okay? When we create a content marketing, okay? So we've got to uh, stick to the ethics, yeah? Okay, uh, we cannot out of the tracks and then out of the law, okay? Or it will be dangerous. And honesty, honesty is uh, important as well. Okay, so what will be, oh, so sorry, something missing. Benefits of content marketing to the organization, it should be to the organization. So it can increase the sales and then cost saving and then better uh, customers who have more loyalty. Uh, if, if you remember, okay, when you uh, becoming a member of something, okay, so you will get some privilege. Am I right? For example, you go to H&M, right? And then you've got the member card or you go to the hard rock and then you will get the uh, membership card. So it means that you will get more privilege, okay, uh, compared to the, uh, what is it, to other uh, customers, yeah? Okay, and then uh, content as a profit center. So it means that uh, from the content, so we can uh, make as a profit uh, by, yes, the, I do remember one of you has already written down about viral. Okay, so how can I, my product becoming viral to the content marketing, okay, using the uh, digital channels like that. Okay, done. Now I want you to watch this. Have you watched this one, class? Because we are going to talk about Starbucks. Anyone? Nope. Yes? Not no, yet. Not. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Is it okay if I play this uh, video? Sure. Yeah. All right. We we do have some time. Yeah. All right then. So we can discuss based on this video then. Okay, let me uh, share. Wait. Single one of us. There are a handful of the. Wait a minute. So sorry about this. Where is my Zoom? Okay, wait a minute. Uh oh, oh, this one. So sorry about this. I'm taking your time. Wait. Hey, I think 
Yeah, okay, I will share. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, can you see it in my screen? Yeah, all right yes. then. Yes, okay, right. thank you. But Howard Schultz, the mastermind behind Starbucks' his empire. For one of those moments, he was just seven years old. His father had just been fired from his delivery job after falling on ice and breaking his hip and ankle. The family had no medical insurance, no savings, and in that moment, no hope. Flash forward to today, and Howard Schultz is a multi-billionaire. He's responsible not just for transforming the coffee industry, but several other industries most people might not realize. But to understand how a simple coffee store can become a global empire, we need to look at the four stages of Starbucks. And it all begins way back in the 60s. This is Gordon Bauker. Whilst traveling across Europe, he ordered a cappuccino from a small cafe in Rome. And he tasted different, better, much better. You see, at the time, most Americans only drank cheap instant coffee or low quality coffee from diners. When he returned from his trip, Gordon told two friends about this experience and they decided to try and bring higher quality coffee to the American market. This is the original Starbucks, a small store with no big plans. It opened in 1971 on Seattle's seafront. However, it wasn't like you're imagining. The original Starbucks store sold bags of high quality coffee beans along with the equipment needed to make coffee at home, but they didn't actually make or serve drinks in the actual store. With this business model, growth was slow but steady. By 1981, they had four stores, all based in Seattle, and the coffee was selling well. So well, in fact, that they caught the attention of Howard Schultz. Now, despite growing up very poor and with the difficulties with his father losing his job, through hard work, Howard had managed to build a career for himself. It hadn't been easy. He'd even had to sell his blood to afford to get through college. But by 1981, Howard was the vice president of a company, and that company just happened to be one of Starbucks's suppliers. This is how Howard Schultz first heard about Starbucks. He was intrigued by the amount of orders this little coffee company was making and went down to one of their Seattle stores one day to check it out for himself. He tried their coffee and was immediately hooked. So much so that he decided he wanted to be a part of Starbucks and reached out to the three guys who founded the company to see if they'd hire him. But the only person who thought Howard joining Starbucks was a good idea was Howard himself. The three founders of Starbucks were reluctant to let someone else join. And even Howard's own mum told him, you're doing well, you have a future. Don't give it up for some small company nobody's ever heard of. Despite this, Howard was persistent. He was unfulfilled in his current job and could see the huge potential for Starbucks. So he kept writing to the Starbucks founders and after over a year of convincing, Howard joined the Starbucks team. Little did anyone know, that decision would change everything. And when people say you're an evil empire bent on world domination, you I, say... I hate that. I hate that. Now it was Howard's turn to visit Italy, and very similarly to Gordon, the original Starbucks founder, he loved the way the Italians did things. But whereas Gordon had loved the taste of the coffee and the way it was brewed, Howard fell in love with something different, the experience. During his trip, Howard noticed in Italy that with many coffee shops, the staff seemed to know the customers and called them by name when their drink was ready. He also noticed that people would go to these coffee shops not just to grab a quick drink, but to relax, to chat to people, some even to get work done. For example, someone ordered a cafe latte 
And when he tried the drink for himself, he thought, no one in America knows about this. I've got to take it back with me. And I was uh, captured emotionally uh, by the Italian coffee bar, the sense of community, the third place between home and work. And I raced back to America thinking, this is what I'd like to try and do and transform the Italian coffee experience uh, into the American society. That trip to Italy was a revelation for Howard. He later wrote in his memoirs that originally Starbucks had sold great coffee beans, but they didn't sell it by the cup. They treated coffee as produce, something to be bagged and sent home with the groceries. But to Howard, he felt they were missing the heart and soul of what coffee was really about. He felt that just like Italy, they needed to make coffee not a product, but an experience. Howard was excited. Right up until the moment, he told the Starbucks founders about this idea, who quickly shot him down. They argued a Starbucks was a retailer, not a restaurant or bar, and they couldn't just completely switch up their business model and start making drinks in the actual store. They felt things were going quite well as they were, so why risk all that to try and become a cafe? Howard became increasingly depressed. Eventually, he realized that his vision of bringing the full coffee experience to America just wasn't going to happen with Starbucks. And so in 1985, Howard left Starbucks to start his own company, Il Giornale, the Italian word for newspaper. He wanted the high quality copy of Starbucks, but with the atmosphere of the Italian cafes he loved. But once again, pretty much everyone told him it was a bad idea and a stupid move to leave a promising company like Starbucks. Over the next year, Howard spoke to 242 people about his idea. And 217 said no. The problem with his idea that he heard was that Americans would never spend that much money on coffee. Howard's business plan revolved around him selling coffee at $3 per cup. And at this time, coffee generally sold around 50 cents per cup. You want people to pay six times more just for the experience? Yeah, right. If I came to you in 1987 and I said to you, I want to build a company with Italian saying words that no one could pronounce for three dollars a cup of coffee, would you invest? Absolutely not. Okay. But if there's one thing you should have picked up on by now, it's that Howard Schultz is a very persistent man. And after speaking with hundreds of investors, he finally raised enough capital to launch his own Italian-style coffee shop. But uh, hold up a second. I thought this was meant to be the story of Starbucks. What's going on here? Well, you see, within two years of Howard starting his own coffee shop, the Starbucks founders decided they wanted to sell up. And because they were still on great terms with Howard, they told him if he could get some money together, he could buy Starbucks. I was thrilled. And the purchase price was $3.8 million for six stores. But I had no money, not nothing. So Howard once again sat out on a mission to raise money for investors. Of course, after trying to raise money for his own coffee shop, he had a lot of investor contacts, and he went to all of them to tell them about this opportunity with Starbucks. And then, disaster strikes. Those investors liked the idea of buying Starbucks so much that he tried to cut Howard out of the deal completely and told the Starbucks owners he'd buy it from them directly. Howard was devastated. He was so close to finally owning Starbucks himself, and it was snatched away at the last second. Deflated and depressed, he told one of his friends about the situation. And he says to me, come to our office tomorrow morning and meet our senior partner. And I, I said, okay, who, who is it? And he said, Bill Gates Sr. And I walk into his office and he says, we're going to go for a walk. And I, I said, where are we going? And he said, we're going to go see the man. And we walked in. I don't know if he called him. I don't know if there was an appointment. I don't know anything. Bill Gates, all six foot seven, six foot eight, towers over his desk and says, you should be ashamed of yourself. This is not going to go down. You, you are going to stand down. And this kid is going to realize his dream. And it worked. Thanks to Bill Gates' dad, the other investor backed down. And Howard Schultz raised the $3.8 million needed to buy Starbucks himself. Once he was CEO, Howard immediately transformed Starbucks from being just a shop to buy coffee beans 
to a place where they actually made and served the drinks in store. He also rebranded his Il Giornale cafes as Starbucks stores, so everything was united under one name. Finally, Howard's vision of bringing the Italian coffee shop experience to America was a reality. And when you zoom out and look at the timeline, you realize what a few years it had been. In 1981, Howard discovered Starbucks. A year later, he joined the team. By 1985, he left the team to start his own coffee company. And now in 1987, Howard was back at Starbucks, this time as the CEO. He was finally the man in charge, ready to shape Starbucks' future. And trust me, things were about to get crazy. Howard's strategy as CEO could be described as aggressive expansion. When he took over in 1987, they had <laughs> stores. But now Howard had found a business model that worked, and he had the backing of investors, it was easy to keep replicating it. Starbucks began rapidly opening more and more stores everywhere. And not just in the US, Howard wanted to take stuff global. And by 1998, Starbucks had opened stores in Japan, the Philippines, the UK, and more. In fact, in the year 2000, Howard stepped down as CEO to focus specifically on global domination. We're opening five new stores a day. That's a new store every five hours, 24 7. Yeah. At its peak, over seven new Starbucks stores were opened every day. And by 2008, Starbucks had almost 17,000 stores worldwide. With Howard leading things, they'd grown the store number by almost 10,000%. Starbucks was seemingly everywhere. Today, every house in America will have their own private plumbing to Starbucks. Can I help you? I'd like to get my ear pierced. Well, better make it quick, kiddo. In five minutes, this place is becoming a Starbucks. Who would have believed that Americans would line up by the millions to pay four bucks for a cup of coffee? However, when the financial crisis hit, that rapid growth came to a sharp halt. The stock price dropped 50% as consumers ditched their expensive coffee habits. But honestly, the financial crisis was far from Starbucks' only problem. That rapid expansion over the last two decades had been covering a sinister problem bubbling under the surface. The growth and success of the company in many ways covered up mistakes. In a company email that got leaked to the public, Howard identified several issues with the company, including customer dissatisfaction. He mentioned that the quick expansion had led to a watering down of the Starbucks experience. Basically, a Starbucks was in a bad state. And the company found itself in tremendous financial trouble. In less than a year, people didn't realize it of facing insolvency. So, Starbucks decided to reappoint Howard as CEO. He'd spent so many years focused on expansion, and now his strategy was to stop expansion completely. Instead, he wanted to restore Starbucks to its founding principles. He wanted to make the stores an experience again. Unlike most consumer brands, the brand was really built by the experience. So firstly, he removed automatic espresso machines. They made the service faster, but removed the romance and theater of watching a barista craft the coffee brought back things like the in-house grinding of coffee beans, which gave the stores that coffee aroma. A lot of the decisions he made didn't make a lot of business sense on the surface, but again, it was all about focusing on the user experience. And one of the biggest unorthodox decisions we made at the height of our problems is we decided to close every store in America to retrain over 100,000 people at a cost of $7 million. Many were shocked by this, and it generated a lot of media headlines and discussion. But Howard felt it was vital to retrain baristas how to perfectly craft their signature drinks. And in a weird way, the decision was actually good marketing. It helped announce to the world Starbucks was returning to its roots and focusing on quality. And it worked. Company growth rocketed up by 143% in 2009. And it's no secret that Starbucks have now continued to thrive and expand again. In fact, at the time of this video, they have over 32,000 worldwide stores. 
But again, let's just hold up a second. The story of Starbucks is undeniably a success story. And how its rise from poverty to billionaire is remarkable. He saw an idea, brought it to a new market, and through hard work and great business strategy, built an empire. However, what's possibly even more remarkable is where Starbucks is heading. I have a question for you. What business is Starbucks actually in? If you just said coffee, I'd say that's debatable. If you've ever seen the movie The Founder, you may be familiar with this scene. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. And with Starbucks, it's kind of similar. There are several different industries they're arguably competing in, which can tell us a lot about the future of Starbucks. Firstly, in real estate, there is something called the Frappuccino effect, which refers to where there's a significant increase in nearby property value because a new Starbucks opens nearby. Seriously, according to Quartz, the average American home rose in value 65% between 1997 and 2014, whereas the average home within a quarter mile of a Starbucks rose in value by 96%. And whilst there's a number of reasons for this, one is that Starbucks has had great ability to select up-and-coming neighborhoods for their stores. They manage to buy the location before the neighborhood prices shoot up. In fact, Starbucks has a team dedicated to selecting new locations for stores based on a wide range of demographic and property data. And this analytical approach has helped Starbucks consistently find profitable locations. But this is also a self-fulfilling prophecy because Starbucks moving to a neighborhood in itself encourages other restaurants and bars to pop up in the same area, thus making it busier and more popular. In other words, a huge key to Starbucks's success comes from their location choices and ability to gentrify an area and increase its perceived value. Of course, a lot of people hate this and think Starbucks are responsible for homogenizing cities, making every town look the same, and ripping out the culture, tradition, and soul of a the place. They've even had protests and riots against them on many occasions. There is a bit of a Starbucks blowback. <laughs> Rolling into town, crushing the life out of the mom and pop coffee shop. But that hasn't stopped Starbucks, and this will likely continue to be an important part of their future. There is already a Starbucks in pretty much every affluent area you can think of, but they'll be looking to further expand into new locations they haven't yet reached. However, there is also a second industry Starbucks is in that's rarely talked about that can perhaps reveal even more about why Starbucks has been successful and why they will continue to thrive. And whilst I've seen this idea presented in a couple of places, one of the best explanations came from a video by Polymatter titled, Why Starbucks is Actually a Bank. You see, paying with cash or card, customers can add money to their Starbucks account Starbucks app, and use that to pay. Doing this gives you more reward points so you can redeem more free drinks. Now, Starbucks is the most popular restaurant rewards app there is. And because of its size and loyalty, People aren't afraid to keep money in the app. In fact, there's an estimated $1.5 billion right now in people's Starbucks balances, which is more than 85% of US banks. Of course, that money will eventually be used to buy coffee. But in the meantime, it provides Starbucks with an interest-free loan. Now, here's where it gets crazier. A normal bank storing people's money has to keep a huge amount of cash on hand in case of withdrawals. But since Starbucks' money can't be withdrawn from the app, they don't have to do that, meaning they can heavily invest in growth in a way other companies can't, because they literally have billions from customers just sitting in their accounts that Starbucks can spend to grow and expand their business. Starbucks now gets 26% of its revenue from products other than beverages. And of that 74% that is from beverages, a huge chunk is from drinks other than coffee. So, as you can see, the reason Starbucks has done so well since Howard took over is that the original founders were focused on the wrong thing. They were focused on the coffee, and the success of Starbucks and its future plans are not just about coffee at all. From the moment Howard Schultz became CEO the first time around, the real product Starbucks sold was the experience. 
Starbucks have even started trialing their reserve roasteries. Massive 20,000 square foot malls designed to be tourist attractions where baristas experiment with different brewing methods and crafting new innovative drinks. So if you've ever wondered why Starbucks became a coffee behemoth, whilst coffee shops with even nicer tasting coffee didn't succeed, the answer is simple. It was never really about the coffee. All right, then, okay, we have already watched the movie. Okay, I think it's very interesting we see the ups and downs of uh, Starbucks, yeah? All right, then, so we would like to uh, invite you to have a kind of comments or, okay, let's say, feel free for the discussion, then, what you have already learned from the Starbucks time. Anyone? <coughs> yes, Ibu Wahyuni, mungkin? Probably. Or, yes, feel free, anyone? There are some keywords that you have already had in the mentimeters.com and then suddenly it's come up in the Starbucks movie. Okay, Pak Tunggu, how are you, Pak Tunggu? Good morning, Ibu. Morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How about you? Yeah, long time no see, okay. Probably you can give some comments or anything that you want to add, please. Regarding okay. Uh, thank you for the chance. You well, mm -hmm. uh, after watching the Starbucks movie, it was really interesting how Starbucks built built their brand image as mm -hmm. well as their businesses. Because the business is not only a coffee. Finally, I found from from the movie that you just uh, played before that uh, Starbucks not only selling a coffee but also doing a business in a property mm -hmm. and also because of the good image of Starbucks well, whenever and wherever Starbucks choose the place to open their uh, outlets then uh, the property price also the value of the property will also get higher increase mm -hmm. because of the present of Starbucks in that location. Mm -hmm. So uh, from that movie, what uh, I'm trying to elaborate is not only a, pro um, a product, which is only a coffee, but also the services as well as the image that uh, they can make already. I mean, uh, because of the because of the presence of the Starbucks, it was uh, built on not only the brand of the coffee itself, but also the, how do you call it? The, it's like uh, if, okay, the simple word is like the accessories following yes, the, the features, product of yeah? the coffee. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. So uh, people, yeah, well, okay, if I can tell that also Starbucks is the, the favorite of my, uh, my daughter. If, okay. Yeah, yeah. If she want to get the place to work, to uh, discuss together with uh, her friends, making a job from uh, her lecturer, so mm -hmm. she will find the place in Starbucks, which actually uh, provide a, not only a good place but also a good uh, equipment, like okay. the outside for the electricity, also the Wi-Fi, which is uh, well very powerful. So they can download everything. They can make the work, things like that. So uh, with Starbucks, actually, we can learn not only provide a product, uh, a product, but also providing the services given following the product itself. So All right. I think that's my comment. Thank you for the, uh -huh. the material. It's very good, Bu Ovalia. Thank okay, you. thank you very much, Patangul, for your participation. Yes, it was great. Okay, so we are not only talking about the product itself, but we do still have another features, okay? Uh, the things, or you said that the accessories, okay, that we are going to sell. I do remember uh, from the previous uh, Amirul, yeah? Amirul uh, from UITM said that when we are talking about the content marketing, so we are talking about the soft selling. So it means that we are not, talking about the product itself, about the coffee, but we are trying to sell the experience. And then again, we also try to highlight the emotion, the engagement of the emotion of the prospective of customers, okay? How they feel satisfied, relaxed, okay? And uh, they can spend 
for uh, time in coffee shop. Okay, even though they've got to spend more okay, for a uh, uh, three bucks for a cup of coffee. And then uh, the demography. Okay, the demography is also important because at the very beginning we talk about the demography and then the value. What can we give to the customers? The value itself. Since we've got uh, Starbucks is very, you know, it has a kind of a visionary. Yeah, uh, of they they have already uh, thought about the what will be happening in the future. They've got the super apps. Nowadays we've got the super apps, and then they can uh, what is that? Uh, uh, what is it? Save their money, deposit the money. Okay, and then yeah, uh, product. Yeah, okay, and then remember about the uh, the the customer loyalty, and it, it also bring in the content marketing. Thank you, Pak Tunggul. A anyone from uh, the class? Yeah, okay. uh, excuse me, Bu. Just one yeah. thing I would like to add is also mm -hmm. Starbucks has been successfully created the payment tools with their yeah. card, which mm -hmm. actually only a member card, but they make in such a way so the card itself can be used as a payment tool. They put mm -hmm. the money in there, deposit, things like that. And then, well, okay, even that, that, that card cannot be used for uh, other uh, merchant, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. outside the uh, Starbucks. But uh, the, the card itself, it's worth not only a membership, but also yeah, just like giving a prestige to the member that uh, who has that card. So that's really amazing, actually. Yeah, <laughs> okay, thank you. That, uh, the value that the customers can achieve can obtain yes. from what is it the product sells by a uh, Starbucks. Thank you, Pak. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you, Ibu. Okay. Uh, other students? Okay. Class, please. Anyone? Uh, do you want to add? Feel free, or we can continue with my slides. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I you. think. Uh, yeah. All right. Feel free if you've got any questions, comment during my presentations, ya, ibu bapak and uh, friends, okay, teman-teman, adik-adik semua, okay. Uh, well, okay. Now let me continue with my uh, PowerPoint because uh, what is that? I'm talking about the best international best practice in content marketing, so I'm trying to use with the Starbucks itself. Okay, we have already watched uh, what is that? The Starbucks movie, and then. We've got the four stages of Starbucks, the ups and down. Uh, the first one is, if you do still remember, talking about the high quality of the coffee and then sell an experience, not the coffee, and then expand, expand, and stop. Okay, so it means every business has a ups and downs. Okay, so we've got to be uh, able to, what is that, to mitigate and to have a kind of a preventive actions. And then we've got to be able to have a kind of what will be the future action? Uh, we've got to see the market. Uh, we need to do some uh, market analysis as well. Okay, uh, talking about the Starbucks in Indonesia. Okay, uh, we've got some menu here. Uh, I think it will be familiar for those who like to, uh, what is that, uh, spend your time in Starbucks. Okay, we've got the, oh, what is that, uh, some, uh, uh, cakery here, okay. Uh, the bakery and can also uh, kind of uh, drinks or beverages, yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got whole cold drinks, whole bean, uh, micro grounds, instant coffee, espresso, cafe latte, evolution, fresh juice, okay, frappuccino. This is one of the uniqueness. If you compare to other coffee shop, probably you cannot find a frappuccino. You just only find uh in uh what is that uh in Starbucks, yeah. The snack, uh, including uh, chips, crackers, and so on. Okay, and then uh, if we take a look at what kind of the marketing strategies adopted, yeah. Okay. Uh, again, from the very beginning, I talk about the target market. Okay, the segmenting uh, consumer market. So they are trying to see from a socio-economic basis. And then they try to concentrate on working professional and for uh, having a suiting workplace because they are trying to highlight the experience that they can over. And then the Starbucks also segments in uh, market on geographic and demographic. We have already seen the movie. Uh, they see that, okay, it's a kind of, uh, you know, the real estate where the uh, Starbucks is so uh, the surrounding will get some uh, profitable uh, 
uh, high, uh, uh, what is it, valuability. And then it is here, uh, most company enter a new market by focusing on single segment, but they have to achieve some success, okay, uh, into more segments, okay. Uh, they also get more teenagers instead of only the professional. At the very beginning, yes, they just only professional, but nowadays they uh, you can see in the Starbucks not only the professional but also the teenagers and young adults as well. Okay, by uh, providing uh, uh, what is that? Uh, developing a product range and social media marketing presence. Okay, and then uh, they are trying to have a kind of marketing mix as well. Okay, uh, to help the brand by developing the unique market position. Okay, and then they. Okay? Uh, try to position themselves as a reputed uh, brand. Yes, if it is compared to others, I think Starbucks is the pioneers. Okay, uh, for the innovation. Okay, and then uh, there are many things that uh, uh, what is that? Uh, Starbucks is more competitive, uh, and then uh, the company's uh, marketing mix as well. Okay, they are trying to uh, engage uh, by targeting the modern and uh, technology savvy generation. If you take a look at everything, will be Friendly use in Starbucks and easy to uh, what is it uh, <clears throat> to consume and then uh, grown the use of digital technology like we have already watched that uh, Starbucks has a kind of uh, apps okay and uh, Pak Tunggul mentioned there is a card that can deposit some money that can be used and give some more benefit by having the the card itself yes anyone. <laughs> Yeah, Ibu Yuni, do you want to say something? No? All right then. And then we'll see here, okay, what are the strategies of marketing adopted here in Indonesia for the Starbucks? They're trying to have a kind of a digital expansion and in social media strategy. I think when we are talking about the content marketing, it cannot be separated from uh, media strategy. And then the marketing campaign as well, and then the CSR, because when we are talking about the marketing, so we also talk about the above the line and below the line. This is a kind of uh, engagement with the community, and then the festive marketing, and then the startup digital marketing presence. Now, I'm going to show you, this is the startup digital marketing presence. Uh, I took this one from the Instagram of uh, Starbucks Indonesia. Okay, there are around 5,442 spots. And then the backwards is around 1.6 million, okay? And then the Facebook is around uh, more than 1.1 million some likes. And then for the Twitter is more than 160K. Uh, okay, and then they try to post daily on the social media. And then handles and comes up with the challenges and games, trying to make some attractive activity to engage with the customer perspective. And then uh, they try to make a kind of a community by having a fan base. And then uh, the last one here, the post and engagement. As I told you before, that engagement is the most important thing when we are talking about the content marketing. So. Uh, the engagement uh, conducted is very constantly uh, through all the platform that they have in Starbucks, okay? And they try to give some more experiences and then uh, it will be related to the uh, promotion channel as well. If you take a look at here, okay, there are some, uh, okay, uh, like this one, trick and tricks, okay? Uh, when it was in Halloween, okay, there is a, tricks and threats, uh, treats, okay, uh, discount up to 70%. So they are trying to use the season, okay, uh, like a festive season as well, okay, they, they give some promotion. And then uh, Monday, uh, usually people don't like Monday, but they are trying to over, oh, Monday will be great by uh, buying Starbucks, you will buy one, get one free. And then on the right side, is it, this is a kind of a below the line activity, the social, uh, corporate social responsibility, they're trying to engage with the people and with the society surrounding. And then uh, if you take a look at here, this is the content that they create in the Twitter. 
and then they try to tweet by a gift from you to us, a gift from you to us. Usually, it will be the seller give the gift, okay, to the, uh, the, the what is it, the prospective customer, but this is something different, okay? The customer gives something to the, uh, what is that, to the Starbucks. Alicia sees album, a Santa baby has a feeling all kind, okay, playlist with a holiday. If you take a look at here, okay, uh, uh, this this the content. These are the content of Indonesian uh, netizens, yeah. Customersly, uh, customersnya udah terak-terak sejak Rabu menuntut kepada mereka. Wow, wow, oh, okay. So this is also sangat memalukan untuk ukuran perusahaan sekali lagi. Okay, this is a kind of a complaint, okay. Uh, and then you see here. Uh, Santa Baby is a new playlist with the holiday classic. Okay. Uh, you see a different responses from the uh, netizen. So you see the engagement from the uh, uh, customers itself, okay, from this one. And then uh, during the COVID-19, uh, Starbucks uh, trying to open the drive through okay? You can see here the locations, yeah? Okay, uh, that provide the, uh, the drive through and then uh, I think, okay, so the key takeaway, uh, good content marketing is creating and distributing the valuables, okay, things. It's not only talking about the product itself, but we are trying to over what kind of values, uh, what uh, the, the customers can uh, get, okay, and then things that relevant, for example, like, for example, you are trying to have a kind of promotion by seeing uh, what will be uh, the, the the key message that you are trying to communicate to uh, by seeing, let's say, for example, the festive season, okay, and then timely because we are using the, you know, the digital uh, marketing or technology and then trying to consistent uh, build, uh, what is it, to create the content. So, so that the, the audience can be updated with the latest information. And then it means that they are trying to resonate with the audience and then trying to hook the engagement of the, uh, what is it, uh, uh, customers, uh, the passions and the comments. You see, from the previous uh, content, you can find uh, different comments. Uh, one is uh, satisfying, the other one is uh, something which is contradictory. Uh, and then the elements of global content. So when you try to make a global content, try to consider about the people, the company process, the system imposed in that country or such as like the cultures uh, and then the aspects, yeah. And then uh, firms ma uh, must make sure as well for the content works and the way they want, the consumers choose, okay. Uh, so, Make sure that you can uh, provide or uh, pick the right words, the right placement, right timing, okay, and also within the cultures. Okay, I think that's all uh, for my class. Okay, if you've got any question, feel free. Thank you. Yes, Ibu Jesseline, probably do you have any comment or any questions? Thank you so much, Miss Ova. Uh, I wanted to speak uh, after your video presentation just now about Starbucks. Uh, right. I'm, a regular. I'm a regular of Starbucks. Okay. Uh, I have a membership app on the phone and the card as well. Oh. But the one thing that I have is that uh, they serve their coffee in a paper cup here in oh. Johor. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's like the video, you know, all in the China glasses, you know. Uh, ours mm -hmm. is in the paper cup. So you pay 20 ringgit. Mm -hmm. uh, for a paper cup coffee. So oh. that's all. Yeah, so sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. Probably they are trying to. Yeah, I, I, I can't feel it. Okay. I can't feel it. Okay. Uh, on I one side, as a customer, mm -hmm. a environment kind of thing, you know, where yes, the sustainability yeah. things because they are trying to transform the plastic uh, coffee cup. Uh, yeah, yes. you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, thank you. For the presentation, uh, the class has responded well, I guess. Uh, I hope so. I have about 20 students in front of me right now. Uh, uh -huh. Let me just share. Oh, you're in the classroom? Yeah, I'm in my classroom. So, oh, okay, I we... see. Hi. Hello. We... So, it's a fine class, yeah? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's my actual class. Yeah. So uh, half of them are online. They are you know joining us from the Zoom. Uh, uh -huh. but the twenty people are in front of me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it's a hybrid, yeah, Ibu. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Then. Okay, first, uh, thank you very much, Miss Jasmine. Okay, uh, from the participant, if you've got any questions or comments or advice or anything, you want yeah. to get to the, the other side of uh, the class, you know, you want Miss Ova to maybe share her view okay. of the student, yeah, it will be fine. Who will have a question? Hi, Miss Ovilia. Hello, so, Ohalia, not Ovilia. Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, just now you said at Indonesia, they cannot use TikTok, right? For for marketing there. So, how we, how they at Indonesia do content marketing in this era? Because, you know, TikTok is worldwide now. So, how we at Indonesia use that? Okay, thank you, Nur Laili. Uh, uh, Nur, Nurul Ayu, okay, Nurul Ayu, okay, Nurul Ayu, okay, that's a good question, okay, now, uh, okay, when we are talking about TikTok, TikTok is now getting more popular, okay, in Indonesia, and uh, most of the business men, okay, or those who have a business is trying to promote to a TikTok platform, why, because it will be easier for them, okay, to have an interaction or engagement. If you ask about how can we promote uh, with a TikTok platform, if you go to uh, some accounts, yeah, okay, there are a kind of a uh, live, you know, uh, in TikTok there is live, yeah, okay, live event, okay, you can sell it, okay, through the live event. And then even you can also give some uh, to the content. Uh, you can also uh, post it some pictures as well. And then for the live event, they can have a, a what is it? A timely interaction, you know. And uh, the time is unlimited. I think okay, you can have it twenty four hours instead of Instagram or Facebook, which is limited. For example, like in Insta Story, it's just only 24 hours, okay, and then everything will be disappeared, okay. Uh, in Reels, you just only very have a limited time, but in TikTok, you know, wow, uh, it is. I think uh, the time is not limited, uh, so they they try to use with that kind of uh, what is that uh, features to have a kind of a content marketing. Thank you. That's a very good question. Okay, I saw from the chat, okay. Uh, saya punya pertanyaan. This is from Aziz. Uh, branding dalam digital marketing seperti membuat konten di YouTube atau medsos lainnya. Yang saya lihat ada yang melakukan dengan strategi persona branding, membrandingkan talentnya seperti YouTubers, oke okay, Dimas dan ada juga yang membranding, membranding langsung mereknya seperti It Sambal. Menurut Ibu strategi mana yang terbaik melihat dua perbedaan tersebut? Wow, well, okay, this is a good question, Aziz. Okay, when we are talking about a branding, okay, branding cannot build be built, okay, within one to two months, okay. We need to build the brand within years, okay. <laughs> so when you are talking about which that I want to, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, I want to highlight the, the 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 talent or the 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 brand itself. It depends, okay. The talent is as the you know like the ambassadors, okay. Uh, they probably they don't use them for uh, what is that in a long lasting uh, time periods. But the brand is the thing that people will recalling will remember okay so i think it will be much better if you're trying to uh, have the brand first okay but i cannot say as well okay what is that uh it doesn't mean the you cannot uh what is it propose the talent okay but it will be much better to have the brand okay uh it will be having a longer time instead of the talent because uh, when we talk about the talent, sometimes the brand will not uh, hire the talent anymore. That's because of something, okay? The reasons behind that, probably like that. Okay, and then 
Does cheap marketing count as a good marketing? Okay, this is from Amirul. Hello, Amirul. Okay, you are very uh, active in this class today. Thank you, Amirul. Okay, uh, cheap marketing. Okay, uh, as a good marketing. Well, when we are talking about the digital marketing, okay, if it is compared to the traditional one, digital marketing is much cheaper. Okay. <laughs> Uh, compared to the traditional, do you remember when you want to add something in the traditional, uh, what is that, uh, media, uh, for example, like newspapers, it costs, uh, it is very costly. But when you want to promote in Instagram, you don't need to spend much money, okay? You can, uh, what is that, you can uh, create a business account without paying, and then you can also, what is that, uh, optimizing your uh, keyword of your uh, brand or probably your product through the SEO, search engine optimizations, okay? But if you want to spend a little bit more, you can use the SEM, search engine marketing by depositing your money into Google and then they will create some schedule, which one or which platform that you're going to use to promote your uh, product, okay? So uh, now you've got a lot of choices, okay, uh, in digital marketing. Thank you, Amiro. Any other question? Ijin Ibu, kalau boleh saya menambahkan, okay, uh, personal branding. Yes, okay. Thank you, Pak. Okay, Pak Tunggul, Monggo. If you want to say something, please. Okay, because okay. you are here. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, interesting with the question of. Uh, uh, the choice which which is uh, personal branding or uh, rebranding the product itself. Well, actually, if you are uh, if you want to brand or making make a branding of a personal branding, it it has to depend on of uh, depend on the personality of a person. So most of the product try to get the uh, uh, star or actors or even athlete to. Uh, personalize their product their product through their character through their uh, performance as well as also the the achievement of the uh, start but uh, it's going to be really a problem if uh, suddenly a star uh, getting down or even mm -hmm. make something which is uh, in public <laughs> yeah. we have an experience here in indonesia the the beauty uh, beauty shop oh, so yeah. I am uh, okay. uh, using a star which is actually uh, the the star doing something bad so the product also going down so using the personal branding actually it has really uh, it has to be careful yeah okay okay if you but again if you choose the brand to be to be uh, increased or to be promoted so you also have to be careful because once you choose the brand and the brand itself going down so it will be really helpless yeah mm -hmm. uh, some cases happen already in indonesia some brand has to be yeah has to go down and disappear from the market because of uh, that action um, so that's why now, like today uh, for uh, for example uh, the car yeah uh, mm -hmm. if we maybe uh, some of you already got the news that uh, toyota no calling for the product because there's a uh, uh, airbag which is actually uh, dangerous for the passengers for the driver driver as well so they recall the the change that airbag system for free so that's one of the way to to save the brand yeah uh, because of the product uh, accessories of uh, airbag uh, uh, get wrong so the brand has to take action really to repair their reputation things like that so okay. that's from, from me bu oval sorry to <laughs> well and thank you very much for the time <laughs> yeah thank you very much Patungu, for your participation and your comment yes that's right okay because crisis communication is very costly be careful okay you need to maintain about the reputation of the brand okay yes any other questions we do still have around 10 minutes probably anyone or that's because of uh, it's already zuhur time and it's time for lunch 
Yeah, Miss Jasmine. Yeah, I'm so happy uh, today for having this sharing session. Okay. Yes, Ibu Jasmine, want to say something? Okay. Uh, on behalf of the students, um, we only we were only told about this uh, sharing session about a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I did not imagine that it will come true today. So okay. I'm glad for the invitation. I'm glad for the opportunity. Uh, thank you to Dr. Tifa and yourself, uh, Ms. Oval, and also to the students in uh, Perbanas Institute and friends, new friends in Perbanas Institute. So uh, a big thank you from all of us here in UITM and Johor. So am I. Thank you very much for this kind of opportunity for giving the session in your class, Ibu Jasmine. It is an honor for me to know you, okay, one to one, physically, or oh, not physically, virtually, okay. Mm -hmm. And also meeting all the students in Malaysia. Hope I can meet you uh, physically. And then thank everyone, you. thank you very much. You. And then please apologize if there is any convenience things that I have already presented during my presentation or my class. Oh, students again. Okay. Okay, would you like to make your camera on and we are going to take a picture together, please? Okay. Okay, yes. you want to touch up your makeup or something? Okay, okay sure. you want to touch up so that you, you, you'll be looking beautiful. Okay, okay so thank you. Can you please take a screenshot? Yes, okay, everyone, please give me a very good smile of yours. Okay, yeah. Okay, we've got a uh, five five pages. Okay, first okay. page. Okay, this is the first page. Wait a minute. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, wait. Okay, the second one. Okay, wait. Uh, okay, uh, somebody can help me, uh, Aldi? <laughs> Screenshot and not copy paste. Can. Yeah, because there are five pages here. <laughs> I can imagine. I'm using my screenshot. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna end me over. Oh, <laughs> not I, the I, all right. Okay. This is the second page. Yeah. I'm trying to, what is that? I'm trying to do the snipping tool. Yeah. Okay. The second one. Okay. Give me the very beautiful one of yours. Okay. Uh, everybody. All right. Thank you. Okay. And then, okay. This one, the third one. Senyum, senyum. Don't stop. <laughs> okay. Wait. Wow. Many <laughs> new, new faces. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is the third one. Wait. I'll, I'll send it to your WhatsApp here, Ibu, later. Okay, sure. Uh -huh. okay. Senyum, senyum, <laughs> adalah ibadah, ya, oke. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, this is the fourth one, and then will be the last one. Wait, okay. <laughs> Okay, this one is the last one, yeah? Okay, wow, the last page. Do not open their camera. Please make your camera on. In the last page. <laughs> all right then. Well, okay, I think that's all today. Thank you very much for your participation. And then looking forward to meeting you again tomorrow. Okay, oh, yeah. for Miss Jocelyn's class, yeah? In my class. Yes. Okay.